Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Today we're going to talk about um, bleeding disorders. Uh, this is one of the biggest uh, topics I think students need to get a good grasp on. For if you ever shadow the hematologist, you gotta what how do you remember this stuff, man? This is crazy, man. I can keep it straight. Yeah, that's true. Because they got a trick, man, and they never tell you. And I still have to give credit to Dr. Barone because he taught us this for uh, our medical boards. I want you to first of all split your brain into two. Okay? Into two. So you can understand what bleeding disorder is all about. If you're watching this video right now and you don't understand the clotting cascade and you don't understand the platelet plug cascade, please, please go back, click down here and go back to the Caught in cascade video, so you can understand what I'm about to talk about right now. So, we're gonna split our brain into two, and from now on to forever and ever and ever, it's gonna be two brains, okay? On one side of our brain right here, it's gonna be platelets. Platelets. Only platelets. On this side of the brain, coagulation factor dysfunction. That's all I want you to know for now. You split your brain into two, platelet problem. Clotting factors, coagulation factors, they are two different things. Remember, platelet make the hemostatic, primary hemostatic plug, right? And these guys are going to make the fibrinogen into fibrin, and everything's going to come together. So let's start. Patients are going to come into the hospital and they're going to tell you they're bleeding. And you're going to be like, okay, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah, yeah, there's something because they think you know the answer. And now we're going to figure out by the end of this lecture. The first thing you have to understand is, is it a platelet problem? Or are they missing some coagulation factors? We don't know. So they're going to come in with this. On this side of the brain, this is the only part of the brain we are working with right now. Platelets. See? Platelets, coagulation factors. I try to draw a map of the brain. One part for cerebellum, but the other part so we can be on the same page. They're going to come with superficial bleeding. That's the history. Doc, I noticed I have this little, little dot on my skin. They call them petechia. Petechia. Or they might have something called ecchymosis. Or a purpura. From now on till thy kingdom come. Anytime you hear purpura, ecchymosis. Petechia. Always think platelets. Petechia, it's going to be your board. It's going to say, oh, it has some petechia leaking lesion. A palpable purpura. You're like, palpable and purpura? Sounds like something like it's done with the platelets. Always remember that. Meningococcosemia, sepsis, DIC. We're going to talk about that. Platelets, platelets. Petechia. Echimosis. Petechia is tiny little duct hemorrhages. You see on the, like under the skin, tiny little duct. If it gets a little wider, it becomes an ecchymosis. It's kind of a spread, okay? And purpura, it's more of a widespread, okay? Look the picture up on Google and you'll see it. That will give you an idea of picture, okay? Because when you see a patient, like, oh, yeah, I might have a little problem. Or you see, Doc, you know, my nose is bleeding. I have nose bleeds. You don't know if it's a blood problem. You don't know if it's a coagulation problem. You're about to find out. What you tell you, Doc, my message is ridiculous. I'm bleeding like crazy. Menorrhagia. That's all mucous membrane. Okay? Endothelial bleeding. Skin. Mucus. Skin. Palpable purpura. Ecchymosis. Petechia. Menorrhagia. Nosebleeds. Right? So when they come into your doctor's office into the medicine, you're like, you know, what do I order first? Since you're thinking platelet, the first order is what? Get a CBC. When you get a CBC, which is a complete blood count, He'll give you the platelet count. You want to know what their platelet count is. Way back in the days, you know how they used to know um, if you have a platelet problem? We use something called the bleeding time. Do you know what the bleeding time is? It's the time it takes you for you to bleed until you stop. <laughs> I think that is crazy, right? Like, I'll cut you. Let me see how long it takes you for you to bleed. Okay? Uh, actually, it's not cool. Because the way they test it, they'll take blades put it on a, a scale and it snake your skin and, starts, and they start to time. Hmm, let me see how long it takes you to bleed. 
I don't think any of you guys would. I'm not sure they, they're not gonna do that on me for sure. No way. Okay. So when you hear bleeding time, I always think a play problem. Now we're gonna take our brains, our little big brain, and split it into two. There's two things that can happen. I can actually have low platelets, which the terminology of medicine is called what? Thrombo, right? So we're gonna split this into two now. I can have low platelets, which we call thrombocytopenia. Did you see that? Low platelet. Let's see, what can cause low platelets? Mm, a lot of things can cause low platelets, right? But what I want you to know, there's two, three, there's three things in medicine that's always like there. They will test you on your bad boards, you're gonna be like, oh, good, not again. Is remember these three things. The first one is ITP. Idiopathic, which means we don't know what causes it. Thrombocytopenia. Two, TTP. Thrombotic, thrombocytopenia. We're gonna. I'm not gonna talk about the pathogenesis of this disease because that's a whole lecture on its own. And the third one, HUS, hemolytic uremic syndrome. This is a classic three thrombocytopenic syndromes you need to come into memory. This is extremely important. But every time you see low platelet, so which means if their platelet is low, what you expect the bleeding time to be. If I don't have any platelet to remember the EMS to come to the spot because they're low, I'm going to be bleeding a lot. I mean, bleeding time will be extremely hot. Right? Remember those three things. Keep that into memory for now. Another thing that can also cause low platelets is hit. Heparin induced thrombocytopenia is basically making antibodies against platelets and heparin which also consumes your platelets which I'm not really going to go into details because that's another lecture on but remember these four things because we're going to talk about their pathology and the pathophysiology later on down the line. However, actually I might have platelets and they might not be working. Can you believe that? We can actually have normal platelet count. And by the way, what is a normal platelet count? It's between 150 to 400,000 uh, uh, cubic millimeters. Just remember that number. You have to know that eventually, okay? Actually, I can have a normal platelet, but they're not working. How can that be possible? I have platelets, but they're not working. Let's see, how can that happen? A patient on aspirin. How does aspirin work? Ah, oh, let's show you. Remember the arachidonic acid? Aspirin is going to block cyclooxygenase 1 and 2, which means I can make what? Thromboxin A2. Remember the last lecture, thromboxin A2 does what? Plated aggregation. If the patient can come together, and worth it. So I do have normal platelets, which means what's going to happen to my bleeding time? It's going to be high, not because I don't have platelets, it's because the platelets are there, but they're just not working, right? There's nobody to spread the perfume to attract them to come. I know the reason I can actually have normal platelets and they're not working is this, uremia, uremia, classic. A 40-year-old diabetic patient, on, you know, hasn't gone to dialysis for so long. He can't exceed all those BUN, I mean the urea, out of their body. The urea actually comes and coats around the platelets. So if you coat the platelets, the antibodies can stick out and stick to each other. So everybody's just playing around and have normal platelets. However, they're not working. They can't stick together. None of those glycoproteins are working at that point. Know that. See how easy this is? So I can actually have low platelets, my bleeding, I'm bleeding a lot, I'm having all these syndromes, or I can have normal platelets, however, they're not clotting. Now, we can have genetic disorders. There are three genetic disorders you have to know. And actually, we're gonna go over them. 
And if you don't remember what I told you, always remember go back. And if you're listening to this lecture, always go back to Cloud and Cascade to understand. The first one is Banner Sulea. Very rare disease. I don't even think I'll see in my lifetime. Which is a glycoprotein 1B deficiency. Glycoprotein 1B, remember, is needed for you to bind to all those von Willebrand. So if there's no glycoprotein 1B, von Willebrand will just be staying there and you're still going to be bleeding. Okay? How do I remember Bennett Schulia? Bennett start with what? I like this guy. It start with a B. So I tell you glycoprotein 1B. Remember, I see a normal platelets. The platelets are normal. The, the problem, problem is they can't bind. And number two is Glansman thrombocytopenia. Right? Glansman is going to be a deficiency in glycoprotein 2B, 3A. That's the same glycoprotein. Remember that glycoprotein I told you about that needs to cause platelet aggregation? If they're not there, they can produce it. If you have a deficiency, remember, if the places cannot come together, you're still going to keep bleeding. You need those two in between the fibrinogen to hold them together. And if they're not there, oops. I'm still, but look at it. My platelet count is still normal. But what's going to have a bleeding time? It's going to be high because I'm going to keep bleeding because there's no platelet to stick to each other. Another problem could be what? I can have normal platelets, but how about this? Von Willebrand factor is on vacation. This patient is going to come in with mucous membrane. It's a classic board question. They're going to tell you it's nosebleeds. They have a petechia. They have a menorrhagia, right? A 19 or 15 year old girl is having these problems. Von Willebrand factor. And we're going to talk about the clinical significance and the pathology later, but this is what you got to remember. Von Willi, Von, if there's no Von Willebrand, remember those Von Willebrand? You need those glycoprotein 1B to bind to Von Willebrand. If they're not there, you're going to still bleed. See how easy this is? So if you commit this to memory, so just a brief summary, we are still working on the right side of our brain. Right? It's this. Superficial bleeding. Think platelet. Petechia. Echimosis. Palpable purpura. Right? Nosebleeds, menorrhagia, order CBC stat. Look at the platelet count. Is the platelet count normal or is it low? If it's low, go into this little, little extra pathway ITP, TTP, HUS, and HIT. They might be on heparin. Remember, if the patient's on heparin, oh, we got a problem. Or is the patient platelet normal? If it's normal, it's either, are they on aspirin? If they're on aspirin, bam, we give you the answer. Are they on dialysis? And you haven't had dialysis in a while, they're diabetic, they got uremia. Do they have venous cilia? Very rare. Glansman thrombocytopenia? Very rare. Von Willebrand factor deficiency. But what? It's going to be different about Von Willebrand is this. So, this is just Von Willebrand, okay? Von Willebrand's disease. What is the platelet count? Normal, right? The platelets are normal, right? What is the bleeding time? It should be high, right? Why? Because there is no platelets to bind to, there's no Von Willebrand factor to bind to, remember? However, Remember, Von Willebrand is the husband, and factor A is the lady. If Von Willebrand is not around, we're going to be missing factor A. Remember, factor A is that guy I told you right there that's converting factor 9 into factor 10 in the intrinsic pathway, right? So if there's no factor A, what would you expect the PTT to be? Elevated. That's why people with Von Willebrand factor... It's high PTT. How about the PT? Will it be normal, abnormal, low, or high? It should be normal. It's PT. Remember, PT is dependent on the extrinsic. We're going to war, right? It's 
1972 cofactors has nothing to do with the this cute little mnemonic I give you 11 9 10 2 1 right 7 this is where 8 is and this is where 5 is this is the guy that's missing factor 8 so this guy is gonna be PTT is gonna be high so when you order CBC you should expect platinum count to be normal however PTT should be high they're bleeding because bleeding time, but we don't we don't do bleeding time anymore. But this is a classic board question. This is the way it is, okay? And we are done. It's over. Platelets, platelets, platelets. Switch our brain. Let's lock that and go to the left hand side of our brains. We are going to coagulation factors. This is coagulation factors, not platelets, not platelets. This is coagulation factors, okay? Coagulation factors are the factors I just wrote on the board. These fellas. 12, 11, 9, 10, 2, 1, 7, right? With a little bit of factor 8 and a little bit of factor 5 here. This, all these bad boys have the coagulation factors. What's the point in life? Their point is to convert fibrinogen into fibrin. Make a nice static plot. If one of these guys is missing, one. This reaction is not going to happen. It's not going to happen, right? Everybody came to the party, except this guy, mm, forget it. The party's not going to go on. So this is what we're talking about here. How is the patient going to present? The patient's going to come to the hospital, right? They're going to have deep bleed. It's going to be deep in the tissues. I want you to sing along with me. Hematoma, hemacros, hemothrosis, coagulopathy. Hematoma, hemacrosis, coagulopathy. Hematoma, hemacrosis, hematrosis, coagulopathy. Hematoma, 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 hematrosis, hematrosis, hematrosis. Bleeding in the joints, bleeding in the joint. Hematoma, bleeding in the tissues. Hematoma. It's gonna be on your boards. They're gonna write it there. The guy is bleeding in his joints, right? And the little thing they hit, they're bleeding. They hit, they're bleeding. Why are they bleeding? Hematoma, hematrosis. Did you just throw words around? That's the reason. You hear that word? I'm not a singer, okay? That's not the point. What do you order? I want to order a stat CBC. I'll check the platelets too, because I don't know where it's coming from. But I want to see what that PT and their PTT looks like. So they're going to have patients with easy bleeding. The funny thing is this guy also have easy bleeding because they're scratching nose and they're bleeding. They have menorrhagia they're bleeding. But these guys have easy bleeding. But what makes these guys different is the hematoma, hematrosis, coagulopathy. So I order a PTT and a PT. And the first thing I think of is going to be like this. The first disease. Hemophilia. It doesn't have the word in it. Hemo, hemophilia. Hemophilia is a factor eight deficiency. That means if factor eight is missing, this guy right here. So let's think about it. Factor eight is missing. What would the platelet count? No more. It's nothing to do with platelets. This is platelets. What is bleeding time? It's going to be what? It's going to be high a little bit. Why? Because they're not clotting well. It's actually going to be normal a little bit. But if you touch them, they're going to bleed. What are you going to expect the PTT, PTT to be? The PTT, PTT, it's going to be high because factor 8 is missing. What you think is going to be the PT, PT is going to be normal right so factor eight is gonna cause what a high ptt a platelet count is gonna be normal and bleeding time is gonna be normal because what will happen is the platelet are gonna still gonna be able to stick together right except you have von willebrand missing the platelet is still gonna be able to stick to von willebrand they're gonna do their thing but you know what we can't coagulate Another disease is what? Hemophilia. This is called hemophilia A. It's hemophilia B. Factor 9 deficiency. 
We're back to the same story. Dr. Nice may say we can't feel this, right? And there's also a hemophilia C, which is factor 11. Can you see? This is usually in Jews. And it's always males. Don't mess that, that wrong. They will always tell it's a male that's having bleeding in their joints, always bleeding in their in their arms and their legs. Easy bruising. Every time they jump, bam, they hit something, they're blue breathing. Check for factor eight deficiency. And how do we treat it? Oh, we give them factor eight back. I like that. You give them factor eight back. Okay. So that's the three things I want you to first remember. Another thing that you should be worried about is vitamin K deficiency. Right? If somebody doesn't have vitamin K, which I told you is needed to activate factor 1972, 9, 7, 10, 2, right? How can we not have vitamin K? Usually a kid, a newborn that's baby that's born has no vitamin K in their gut. There's no E. coli. They need E. coli to make vitamin K for us, right? At least we get benefit. They're just not sitting in our poop, not doing anything, right? So we give them a vitamin K shot, right? How can we not, if you're not eating enough vitamin K, you're going to be deficient. Also, if you're warfarin, right? If you're warfarin, what will happen is actually what they don't tell you is although we always say PT is going to be high or INR, which is true because 9, 9, 10, 7, and 2 is missing, but think about 9. 9 is on the what? PTT pathway. So PTT is also slightly high. We just don't talk about it because it's slightly high, but it's not as high as PT. PT, prothrombin time, because this is the prothrombin time, okay? So, but, you know, that's just a little extra information, but the bottom line is PT is going to be prolonged. What about if you're heparin? If you're heparin, you're going to inhibit 12, 11, 9, and 10 by acting on antitorbin 3, so obviously PTT is going to be what? Extremely high. Tell me one more thing we need to finish this lecture with to actually understand coagulopathy. Well, I don't even know why we're talking if so, the guy that actually gives us all these cofactors is not alive. It's like a parent without, a, you know, a, kid, a, a little dog without a father is just warming him lessly around, right? You know, there's nobody to provide food for him. If the liver is dead, liver cirrhosis, right? If you live, listen to the liver function test lecture that I made, you will realize one of the most important things the liver does is what? Make vitamin K. And makes all these cofactors except factor A. So if the liver is gone and it's not working, you're going to be bleeding. You check the PT, very hot. Also, you don't have albumin also. But the problem is if you have liver problem, automatically you will actually bleed. This has bring, brought us to the end of this lecture. This is how hematologists think. They make medical students, nursing students, they make them look idiots. But this is how they think. And you're sitting there like, oh my god, I, I can't figure this out, it's too much stuff. But this is it. Summary. Bleeding disorders, platelets, coagulation factors. Platelets, coagulation factors. Your left and your right, right and left side of your brain, okay? Platelet problems, superficial bleed, okay? Then you have hematoma, I'm sorry. Echimosis, purpura, and you have petite care. Nosebleeds, menorrhagia. Okay? Labs, your other platelet count, is it low? If it's low, think ITP, TTP, HUS, HIT. If they're normal, think they're aspirin, they have uremia, or they have been a saline glands, man, or viable von Willebrand. You're done. Suit your brain. Coagulation factors, think hematoma, hematrosis, coagulopathy. Okay? Then, you look at the class cascade, which you already memorized, and you start picking and choosing what you want. Hemophilia, factor A is out, okay? It's usually in males, remember that. Factor 9, factor, uh, factor 9 and factor 11, B and C, okay? Vitamin K deficiency, okay? Think about it. You're not going to have enough you know, vitamin K to make all these core factors active. PT is high. Liver problems, okay? PTT is still going to be high, okay? And that is it. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please subscribe to my videos uh, and also visit our website. 
ftpinc.org. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. Take it easy. God bless. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PA student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam? Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, I want you to check out my website below. I've listed all the list of exams, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website, be able to reach me directly, and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you are super awesome, and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you wanna be a doctor, wanna be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome. And do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Let's go.